Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Rory Abraham. Um, uh, I'm here to talk to you about Expensify and what we've been doing in the open source community. Um, I'm not really going to be talking about um, all the things we're doing with React Native, um, but mostly I'll be talking about um, the kind of unique workflow we've set up to uh, engage with a broader community of developers. Um, and yeah, so let's, let's get started. Um, this is me. I'm a full stack developer at Expensify. So to get started, I want to talk about what is Expensify. Um, because the traditional answer to this is that Expensify is a uh, expense reporting company that helps businesses run their finances and track their expenses, reimburse employees, um, pay invoices. Um, but we always felt that this kind of fell short of our broader vision. Um, and so we did a big thought experiment and kind of tried to define exactly what we are. And very broadly, we see ourselves as a community of people um, collaborating to solve collective action problems. <clears throat> so while our tool is a ex uh, powerful expense reporting tool that helps people run their businesses, um, we thought that to tackle this broader class of problems of you know uh, empowering people to collaborate to solve collective action problems um, we needed to just take a step back and provide a more inclusive vision for the product um, and where we landed is this chat tool that you see today you're all using this um, and so you're wonder you may be wondering like why is this an expense reporting app and it's the answer is that it's not really um, across all forms of collective action problems um, the kind of most common denominator is communication. Financial transactions are really just a specialized type of communication where money, goods, or services are transferred between people. Um, and it turns out that the most important and most challenging part of facilitating financial collaboration between people is actually just facilitating collaboration. Um, and so we feel that this chat approach is actually uh, a very approachable way to facilitate uh, collaboration between people and it can scale up to um, our most advanced use cases but is approachable to entry-level users. Um, <coughs> so another advantage of the chat-based approach is that it facilitates viral community growth, right? Um, so with the traditional Expensify app, it's a little bit hard to get value out of it if your employer doesn't use it. Um, your you will set up your uh, a company in Expensify, you can submit receipts to your manager, you can set up approval flows, and then um, your company can then reimburse you, and they can use this to track their expenses, and it's valuable. But um, to an individual user, it's, it's a little hard to get started. And you can use it to track personal finance, um, but it's just not super obvious how to do that. Um, so I'd like to talk about Expensify as a proof of concept. Um, so our collaborative vision for the future of our product actually informs our internal structure. Um, so this vision that we have goes beyond the product and informs how Expensify is structured in internally. Um, rather than being split up into um, smaller, distinct, discrete teams, um, we have one big team. And each individual has pretty much equal access to uh, contribute their vision to the product and to um, use Expensify as a vessel to solve the real world problems that they're passionate about. Um, so this makes Expensify a great place to work. Uh, it helps us maintain a tight-knit culture. It provides employees um, the freedom to pursue their passions both inside and outside of um, you know, development and encourage us to, encourages us to maintain a bold and inspiring long-term vision for where we want to take our product. Um, and you know to define what that product should be. Um, so more importantly, we believe that this um, collective goal, if our collective goal is to build an open community that empowers people to solve collection, collective action problems, um, then the way we operate as a company necessarily has to be a proof of concept of this vision. Um, and this kind of reminds me, I actually wrote it down. Um, Mike's uh, chat had a really good quote, and it was that, any organization that designs a system will produce a design whose structure is a copy of the organization's communication structure. That's Conway's law. And this is actually exactly what we did. We had this vision for a collaborative, open um, approach to financial and collab 
uh, collaboration of all forms, not just financial, but also like event planning, um, communication, and um, yeah, charity. Um, and so this is actually how Expensify has operated since long before I started. And this is how it's operated since about 2008. Um, and <coughs> meanwhile, uh, we had this, this approach, and uh, our product was not in line with our vision for where we wanted to take it. Um, also, the, uh, in, we had a split brain problem. So we had a separate web and mobile app. Um, our mobile app was built with something very custom called the Apple, um, and this was a uh, JavaScript controllers for native views, uh, but it was built back in like 2009, and so it built to Android, iOS, BlackBerry, and Palm Pre, and it was an internal framework that we had to try and maintain, and so this is where we started to think that we needed to um, step back and do a ground-up rebuild of our product um, to, uh, you know, achieve this dream of a collaborative chat-first approach um, where anyone can contribute pretty equally to this product. Um, and so rather than, you know, we had this big challenge, but we had only about 30 or 40 engineers, and so um, we decided we needed to scale up uh, our engineering output. However, rather than scaling up vertically, um, we decided to scale out horizontally, much like our internal team, um, to engage a broader community of developers, independent developers from around the world in the building and maintenance of our app. Um, so fast forward today. Uh, we have a very vibrant open source community um, with over 1,600 unique developers uh, pushing code to Expensify, our new Expensify repository. So um, this is a huge effort that has, uh, you know, was the culmination of lots of lessons. Um, and so kind of for the rest of this uh, presentation, um, I'm going to be talking about kind of what we've learned along the way, engaging such a broad group of, you know, independent developers that aren't you know, mandated to work uh, any set hours or anything, um, and what we've learned along the way and how it works for us, and um, I think it might be particularly interesting to any freelancers in the room or people who are um, just looking to get extra help in a fledgling project uh, product, because um, it, it's pretty interesting what, what we've done. So the most common question we get is like, this sounds very chaotic. Uh, how do you manage all that? And so um, we kind of actually provide a very simple algorithm that we have used before to uh, you know, address this kind of problem. And believe it or not, um, this isn't the first time that Expensify has done this. We've uh, been able to uh, engage a broader community for other types of business tasks like accounting and um, sales and quality assurance, um, design even. But Engineering is kind of the most challenging one, because I believe, because of the diversity of problems that we as engineers face on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so here's the algorithm. It's pretty simple. Um, our small team is agile, and we solve problems as they come. And as soon as we identify common and repeatable problems, we create processes to ensure those problems are solved. Um, we refine these processes until we're really good at solving this class of problem. Then we try and outsource or automate those processes, and this frees up our core team, which is quite small, to focus on the next problem and move us to closer towards our ultimate goal of uh, engaging a really broad group of community, uh, a really broad community to develop uh, this financial collaboration app. So, um, here I'm going to just go through uh, the most common uh, engineering, the most common class of engineering problem that we we faced, and uh, kind of walk you through our process for um, fixing bugs, which is our most common class problem. <coughs> so, first step is the bug reporting pipeline. Um, Open independent testers are incentivized to beta test the new Expensify app and report all the bugs they can. Um, and so they'll post a uh, post like this in Slack um, that lists the reproduction steps, the expected result, and the actual result. Um, our QA partners triage these bug reports every day um, as they come in, and they validate that the bug is reproducible and it's not a duplicate. Um, and they do some quality to control to ensure that the um, steps are legible, essentially. Um, and because it's on Slack, 
uh, they can actually get fast feedback from the bug reporter. So if they have a question and they're not able to easily re reproduce it, then they can get fast feedback and get a quality bug report um, that they put on our GitHub repo. We used to do it directly in GitHub, but uh, we were just getting flooded with kind of garbage issues. And so this way we have a nice, clean, reproducible bug um, that ends up in our repo. <coughs> So the next step is the proposal process. Um, the GitHub issue, once created, is assigned to an, inser uh, an internal owner. Um, we call this person our bug zero assignee. Um, they, uh, this, they will evaluate the bug, um, make sure it's reproducible and that the expected behavior is what we want. Um, and then they do their best to determine if it's a front end or a back end issue. If it's a front end issue, then they assign the external label. Um, this triggers, oops, going back. Um, this triggers an automation with Upwork, which is our talent recruiting platform. Um, and it posts the job publicly on Upwork. Um, the base rate that is automatically applied to all bugs is currently $500. Um, then uh, contributors will find the post either through um, GitHub or through Upwork and you know, investigate the bug and propose a solution. Um, after some time, an Expensify engineer will review proposals on the issue, um, select the best solution, and then the contributor is free to submit the pull request. Last is the payment phase. So after the, bug, uh, the pull request has been um, tested and merged, um, then after the pull request has been on production for seven days, we initiate payouts. Um, and so the base pay is $50 for the bug reporting and $500 for the fixing of the issue. Now, some of you who may be familiar with our uh, program um, may have noticed I skipped over a pretty important piece. And so what happened uh, after some months of working like this uh, is that we noticed certain contributors were kind of naturally collaborating and critiquing each other. And uh, through this process, um, natural leaders kind of emerged. Um, they were more effective in getting things fixed quickly and ensuring that um, code was consistent. Um, and so. Uh, Meanwhile, demand was growing, and uh, our internal team was be starting to become a bottleneck for um, proposal reviews. Uh, so we carved out this role that we call Contributor Plus. Um, and this enables uh, high-performing members of our community to kind of take more responsibility and self-manage. And so the uh, high-level goal here is that the community itself can become more self-managing without uh, additional overhead for our small team um, trying to drive forward like kind of the, the long-term vision of the product. Um, so Contributor Plus do a lot for us, but um, primarily they act as the first lines of support for um, our internal team by triaging proposals and doing first reviews and testing of uh, proposals on, on issues. Um, their contribution is uh, essentially equal to the, that of the person who solves the issue. So um, it's, uh, we currently have about 30 Contributor Plus um, team. Um, so this was uh, a popular role and it's been very effective in allowing us to scale up this program. Um, so after a little bit more time, we realized some problems with our uh, open source contribution pipeline. And the most common one was that we were optimizing to solve the easiest problems first. Um, contributors, obviously, the base rate is $500, and so they're going to go for the easiest issues because it's the quickest payout. Um, and so we, I remember this was more than a year ago now. Um, there was a big ticket issue. It was assigned to me, and it was had a bounty of about $40,000. Um, and this was to fix something in the React Native core, and we were getting many, many proposals. Um, and we were kind of struggling to find the best solution to the problem. Despite my best efforts, um, none of the proposals were really striking gold. Um, and so we decided to do some outreach. And uh, I believe he's in the crowd somewhere, uh, Mark Rusevi. I sent him an email, and I was like, hey, you seem like you know what you're doing. Can you help me with this? <laughs> um, and it turns out that not only, yes, he can help, but he had a whole team of people who are ready and available to help and who are experts in React Native. And so um, we started working with uh, CallStack, and it, they, we kind of carved out this role of an expert contributor. Now we work with CallStack, uh, Margello, Software Mansion, and Infinite Red. Um, and they're all engaged in 
helping to contribute to our product. Um, they work for us on specialized projects, more challenging bugs, and um, even have been known to take full features from idea to production with very minimal insight from us, or oversight from us. Um, so they've become a very valuable part of our community. So this is kind of the bug fixing pipeline and some additional roles we've carved out to build our community. But uh, so far, it mostly sounds like it's just uh, a kind of unique way to um, fix bugs and develop code. But um, we've done a bit more to take it a step further and kind of walk the walk to really build community um, beyond just our product. And so we've done that in a few ways. One is that we've really committed to shared ownership of our dependencies. Um, we've, developed, we've built all these relationships and processes, um, but we've really tried to uh, take an extra step to make it uh, more than just a series of disjoint um, efforts and uh, more of a cohesive community. Um, so we've connected major players, uh, all these big development agencies, many expert con con contributors from across the React Native space, and they're all kind of working in our app at the same time. And it's really cool to see them collaborating together. For example, uh, CallStack and um, Software Mansion have collaborated to start mo uh, migrating our code base to TypeScript, which is awesome. Um, so perhaps most memorably, uh, back in March, we took uh, all the top performing um, members of our community and we brought them all out to Curacao um, for a conference we're calling Expense Connex. Um, and this was really cool. It was a really, uh, it was a good opportunity to bring everyone to the same place, share kind of our long-term vision for the product and our development um, pipeline, identify common problems and um, optimize things. And it really felt like a turning point where we got a lot more engagement after that. Um, and we have hundreds more developers joining us um, like every month. And so it's really cool to see. Um, we've also kind of expanded out into a physical space where if you're in San Francisco, go check out our SF Lounge. It's open to the public and it's a co-working space that's free. Um, and it's really great because uh, it gives us the opportunity to meet like-minded individuals. Um, they can use our product if they want to, but they also, um, you know, they can develop community around what they're working on um, in this space. Um, we also just opened Midtown Beer Garden. This was a passion project from one of my coworkers, um, and it was just an effort to kind of clean up the Portland downtown Portland community. Um, so, um, I'm, you might be wondering why. Like, I want to take the before I finish. I want to take the. Uh, be sure to answer this question: um, Why are we going through all this effort to do things in such a kind of radical, different way? Um, why have we committed so heavily to this community-based approach? Um, and it's kind of like, why do anything, actually? And this is our mantra. To live rich, uh, have fun, and save the world. And this sounds a little gimmicky, but it's actually quite robust way to uh, live, a, live your best life, essentially. And so to live rich, we define as to live with comfortable means and the freedom to enjoy them. To have fun is to make brisk progress through your bucket list. It's not just like Netflix and chill fun, not Xbox fun. It's actually uh, hard fun that takes planning and coordination between people to achieve really cool things. And then the last thing is to save the world, which I define very simply as to help everyone else live rich, have fun, and save the world as well. So I, for one, am very proud to be a member of this React Native community uh, that we've built at Expensify, and I hope you all join us. That's it. So um, of course, if you have any questions, you can post them in the chat room, and uh, I'll be sure to answer. And I hope to see you all um, in our community. Thank you. <laughs>